Is it working? Yeah. It, it was saying the call was dropped. But it seems like it's working okay now. Uh, oh God. Mac. Are you Mr. Mac? Yes, ma'am, I am. Mr. Mack, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, I can appoint one for you. Did you fill out an affidavit? I think so. Yes, ma'am, that's me. Okay. Do you swear or affirm everything in your affidavit is the truth? Yes, ma'am. All right, this says that you're not currently employed. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Don't get disability or unemployment compensation? Not yet. Okay. Have you applied for unemployment? Yes, ma'am. This one right here. How long have you lived in Knoxville? All oh, my life. All oh, my 50 years. Okay. I live. Soon to be 51. All right. And do you have any family that lives here? Yeah, my, yes, ma'am. Parents? Yeah, Your huh? parents, children? Parents, kids, sisters, brothers, aunties, uncles, everybody. Okay. Um, I've got to check your criminal history. Okay. Starts in 1993 in Knox County, simple possession conviction. Um, and then some driving issues about not having a license and so forth. Yes, ma'am. Criminal trespass. Um, ACDC trespass. More simple possession again. It's quite a bit. Drive without a license. Okay, and your last conviction was 2019 criminal simulation. And then it looks like you've missed court a few times. 2019. What is it? I don't remember that. That says it was on um, April the 5th. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I didn't go to jail for it, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm just saying that's what I, that's the last thing yeah. I see, so that's all right. Yes, Let's see here. Um, they didn't have any out of county information on you. No, ma'am. All right, so what you got today is on a domestic assault charge. Mm hmm. Said this happened uh, yesterday morning, eight o'clock. Yeah, I got beat up when I went to jail. I'm going to jail. Okay. It's that the alleged victim is Heather Morgan. Yeah, that's my that baby mom. Victim had a visible fresh cut on her right ear containing blood. I had nothing to do with that. That, and, that's uh, oh, mm. uh, in any event, there was there was an injury. Yes, ma'am. Like I said, and they um, they gave they gave you credit for it. So anyway, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have to put a bond on this. Um, I'm gonna put a bond of uh, four thousand dollars appearance bond. That means four hundred dollars money. Okay. <clears throat> to the bonding company, okay? And I'm don't I don't want you guys to be around each other. Um, you're not allowed to assault her or threaten to assault her. Um, you're not allowed to contact her by telephone, email, text, nothing. No phone calls, no letters. Um, you've got to stay away from the home she lives in, any other location she's likely to be. And um is that just to court or is that indefinite? I got we got a child together. Well that's well like I said, you'll have you'll have to have your attorneys work something out with the court about that. But right now, until it's set aside, that's the rules. Okay? And if you violate those then you those bond conditions, you can go back to jail with no bond. Okay? Yes, so yeah. I'm gonna ask you to stick with that and if you violate it, rec recognize that you're probably gonna go back to jail, okay? All right, so I'm going to print this off. Have you had the public defender before? Or do you yes, have 
have you had a individual attorney? Just public yeah, defense office. Yes, ma'am. Dang. Right. Four hundred. So how much you take? You take four hundred. Four hundred to a bonding company. Dang. Okay, I'm Mike. appointing the public defender. I'm going to waive the administrative fee. I don't think you can afford it. And I'm going to get you to court. Let me get you to court day. Ma'am? Okay, you're going to be misdemeanor court. And that's going to be on, um, on the 10th. That's going to be tomorrow. Okay. Okay, this is the, this is the, the early morning of the night. You're going to be in misdemeanor court tomorrow unless you bond out. Okay, if you bond out, then the jail is going to give you a new court date. Okay, but if you're still here tomorrow morning, they'll take you to misdemeanor court. And the public defender will be with you. And you can talk about the bond, and, and if you're if you need to ask for a motion to to reduce it, you can do that at that point. Okay, so make it if you can, and if you can't, then we'll talk about it on the tenth. Okay. Okay, August the tenth, misdemeanor court for a bond hearing. All right, you're all set. All right, thank you. Thank. What's your name, sir? Frank Barron, ma'am. Mr. Barron, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one can be appointed for you. Did you fill out an affidavit asking for an attorney to be appointed? I did, ma'am. Clear or affirm everything in your affidavit is the truth. Yes, ma'am. All right, this says that you are not currently employed. Is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. I, actually, I do have a job. I've not started yet. I was, uh, believe it or not, I was shot uh, five times back in April. And it, uh, it health-wise, it made it, uh, I mean, where I was shot at, I couldn't sit down, couldn't lay down, couldn't drive, could, barely could walk. Um, I'm just now recovering from that. Uh, I have had a couple of job offers. Uh, I'm now at the point of health where I am able to well, to walk, you know, and, and, and drive, do whatever I have to do. Um, uh, the healing process was long, long and difficult, ma'am. Okay. But you don't get disability or unemployment or anything, right? No, ma'am, I do not. All right, um, how long have you lived in Knoxville? Well, I mean, other than military uh, and a few other jobs that I've had in Atlanta, I've lived, I mean, I've had a house here uh, 20 years and I've lived here, I grew up here, I lived here all my life. Okay. And um, let me check your criminal history. Okay, starting 1980, conviction for a criminal, uh, for a traffic offense. Um, let's see. And there was some sale and, what is it, sale and delivery? What did they call this back then? Sale and, sale and delivery, not in the 80s. Um, some more of it in the 80s. Dangerous drugs, 1985. Conviction for DUI, 2014. All right, and then... There's a conviction for driving without a license 2019, and then there's some charges from May of this year and June of this year, and uh, looks like one case in August of this year. We'll talk about the one from August, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, that said, this happened yesterday um, yes, in the afternoon on Flanagan Avenue, and the officer responded to a order of protection violation, and there was a disturbance check at apartment 104 and they located Frank Barron drinking a beer as well as Lisa Kosachi Kosaki, uh, who's the alleged victim inside with resident. Barron has responded in a no contact order bond condition for an aggravated assault domestic charge that involved this victim. Um, they verified the order was still active and so there were bond conditions. Okay. 
So I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put that your bond is. Uh, I'm going to put that it's pending and you're going to continue to have conditions um, no contact no harassing no threats um, vacate stay away from the home um, no firearms or other weapons and no alcohol or uh, controlled substances okay yes, if you violate any of these conditions they can take you back to jail and you won't be entitled to a bond okay yes ma'am all right, so I'm going to print those off. Have you had the public defender before? Yes, ma'am. I've got him. He's representing me. He's supposed to be in court for me today, I believe. And on um, the, today on the ninth, you mean? I think so, ma'am. Um, I think today is my court day. And I've, uh, Your Honor, honestly, um, this would be Tuesday. I'm sorry. I, I'm Dude, sorry. I'm just checking. I mean, that that's what you're talking about for Tuesday. I thought so. Are you going to be in felony court? Uh, I think it is. Uh, yes, I, I believe it is. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if I if I may say something, Your Honor. Um, you know, over the period of the past two weeks, Ms. Kasaki has showed up at my home ten times at all hours of the day and night. Um, and actually, I had an order of protection against her. I don't know if it's expired or not. I also had a don't trespass against her where she was not supposed to come on my property. She continues to show up at my house. Um, I, you know, I, I walked out to Kroger one day and she was sitting in my car. I, you know, I don't know, you know, I can't, I don't talk to her. She comes and talks to me. And I don't really know, you know, I don't really know how to handle that. I can't, you know, I called the police and they came and ran her off and they gave a no trespass order for her to be on my property or talk. And I already had an order of protection where she shouldn't be talking or calling me at all. And she has been showing up to my house since this incident first started uh, months ago. And I, you know, I, I, I'm really beside myself. I don't know what to do because I keep getting arrested. And she is the one that is making the effort to show up at my home, show up in my car. I don't know, really, I don't know what to do about it. Uh, I've called the police. The most they do is they run her off and I have order protection against her and a no trespass. Okay. I'm gonna set you for court today Yes, ma'am. Um, and now I'm going to put it in felony court uh, for a bond hearing. All right. And it's, I'm going to put joinder cases. That means you already have a case that's set for today, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And the public defender will be there for your other case, I assume, so we can go ahead and handle this one at the same time. Yes, ma'am. And, and you need to talk to your lawyer about this. Okay? Because they can make they can make requests on your behalf, and they know some of the options that you might have. Okay, but I can't give you legal advice other than to advise you to not violate your bond conditions because, as I said, you wouldn't have any bond, uh, any bond at all. Okay. I swear to you, I, I have not violated my bond conditions. She is, she's showing up on her own volition, and I'm not calling her or asking her. I don't have a way to call her, and I've avoided her in every way. Well, to, uh, I, I'm sure the police are tired of coming to my home. Um, when I, she stole my phone. When I had a phone. I call the police so many times. Sometimes they wouldn't even show up because they've been there so many times over me calling over her. Well, like I said, you need to you need to find something that works and talk to your attorney and see what your options are. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, you're all set for this morning. It sounds like. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's your last name, Jinx? Yeah, Jinx. Mr. Jinx, yes, you, have, you have the right to remain, remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one can be appointed for you. Did you fill out an affidavit? Yes, ma'am. You swear or affirm everything in your affidavit is the truth? I do. All right. Do you live in Knoxville? Uh, currently, I'm, I'm in between homes. I've been staying with my mother uh, in Union okay. County. In Union County? Okay. Yeah. I put on that affidavit homeless because I don't know where I'm going to be living when I get out of here.
Okay, do you have a job? I do not. Okay, um, do you get disability or unemployment? I do not. Okay, let me look at your criminal history. It says um, conviction for driving without a license in January 2021. And then you've got some new charges in August of this year. So let's look yes, at your new charges. The new charges were yesterday. Right. August the, August the 8th. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's a DUI first offense. Yes. And it says there was a head-on collision at 5th and Broadway. It said you had crashed head-on into another vehicle. You were slumped over the wheel. Um, they found an uncapped needle in the driver's door. They administered Narcan, and a, and it showed up that indicating that opioids were present, and Mr. Jinks had overdosed while operating the vehicle on a city street. Said he was lethargic and had slurred speech and pinpoint constricted pupils, indicating opioid use. He refused medical attention, attention and agreed to field sobriety tests, which he didn't perform very well. Um, also found he was driving on a suspended license. Uh, that was suspended for failure to satisfy fines and costs. They found an orange pill bottle in the driver's door containing 0.84 grams of a brown powdery substance, and they believe that to be heroin. And you refused your uh, blood sample, so they charged you with driving under the influence. Okay, so. All right, you've got... I'm going to go, there's a couple of them that are easy for me. Your implied consent is going to be an ROR. And driving on suspended is going to be an ROR. Um, the simple possession charge, I'm going to put an appearance bond on that. And that is a, a I'm going to put a $500 appearance bond on, on both of those. May I ask what that means now? Um, Five hundred dollar appearance bond means you add those two together, and that's a thousand dollars. That means it's roughly a hundred dollars to a bonding company to get to get out on bail. Okay. Okay. Um, but you're going to have conditions on your DUI because of the fact that you were involved in a collision. Um, you're going to be required to have a, a interlock engine interlock device. That I don't means, believe I'll be able to get my license back under the, beneath those failure to pay. It was a medical suspension, and I haven't been able to find a doctor to fill out the paperwork to where I can even pay those fines to be reinstated. So I don't think I'll even be able to get a license back. Okay. So what what the what the rules are going to say here is that. You're not allowed to drink alcohol or take drugs unless prescribed lawfully. Okay, that's a rule. Okay, um, you can only drive a vehicle that has an ignition interlock device installed. So if you are able to drive or or try to drive or whatever, you're going to have to have an ignition interlock on it. Okay, if you aren't driving and don't have a vehicle, you aren't going to have to do that, obviously. But right now, that's going to be one of the rules if you do intend to drive. And you're not allowed to drive any motorized vehicle is the other choice. Right. I'm going to put the ignition interlock on there um, if you if you do drive at all. Okay. Um, um, you can't violate any local, state, or federal law, and you can't change your mailing address without telling the court clerk. Okay. Okay. So. All right, I'm going to put those conditions, like I said, and if you do decide to drive and you're caught without an ignition interlock device, you go straight to jail, even even if you didn't hurt anybody, even if you didn't crash, even if you didn't get charged with DUI, you're not, not allowed to be in a car like that driving, okay? All right, so that's the answer. All right, and so otherwise, you just got the bond, and you can make your bond if you're able to do so. Okay. Is there a hold... How long I have to stay? Um, let me see, just a second.
I'm trying to get this to print off. I'll get the rest in just a second here. Okay. Has the public defender been your attorney before? I haven't had to have an attorney before. All right. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Okay. I'm going to waive the administrative fee because I don't think you can pay it. Thank you. I'm going, to check, I'm going to check and see if there's a, a, a hold. Thank you. Defenders, your attorney. And I'm going to get you to misdemeanor court on the 10th. That's Tuesday. Okay. Actually, today's Tuesday. Uh, that would be on Wednesday, the 10th. Okay. That's in misdemeanor court for bond hearing. Okay. Okay, you have a, like I said, you have a bond. Of thousand dollars, and if you're able to make your bond, um, the jail will give you a new court date. Okay. okay. If you're still here on Wednesday, you're going to go to misdemeanor court. Okay. And explain, figure out why you haven't been able to make your bond. Okay. So you can make it if you can, but if you can't, let let your attorney know, and and like I said, we'll just they'll just take you into court, and you can have the bond looked at, and they'll decide if that's appropriate or not. Okay. Did you say there was a hold uh, as far oh, yeah. as right now? I'm sorry. I'm going to look that up again. I don't see one. Okay. So, in theory, if, if my mother could pay it now, I could be released? Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's subject to your conditions. you got yeah, conditions, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. You're all set. All right. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I might see you later. Okay.